Solar energy stocks obviously getting killed in the past few months. Solyndra, a big reason, I think, why people are a little bit scared about the sector. But then you also have First Solar. Howard Lindsay joining me to talk about that. A bellwether in this industry. The CEO just left. Their earnings came out. Not great, but the stock up on the earnings after losing a quarter of their value on the CEO leaving. Is the solar industry something that a momentum investor has to be just really cautious and you know pick the value? Yeah, it's been off my radar now since 08. I think the industry peaked in that run-up, mm -hmm. in the credit run-up. I think people were felt wealthy. People felt uh, like they may want to do solar. Right. But now people are strapped. Yep. It doesn't matter what the cost of solar is. People are just doing convenience, whether it's big brands, or even oil, right. people are doing less. You know, voting green with your pocketbook can bankrupt you. Right. I mean, it's not a, there's not a strategy there uh, yet for investing. So for solar, been in favor for a long time. It's just a stay away. We've talked about Netflix a lot on this show, and it's just getting worse, it seems. I mean, more bad guidance about subscribers. I mean, people are angry about the price hike and the, we're going to rename the DVD business quickster. Oh, wait, we're not going to rename the DVD business. Is is Netflix finally a value, or is it a value trap that following? Yeah, I would call it a value trap. Okay, there, there's no way you can you can call someone a a, a value stock just because it falls 75. percent right. Netflix's big problem, though, when they raise prices, is there are a lot of other factors going on. They knew deep down that they had two businesses: the DVD old world business, and they had the streaming business. And they sure as heck didn't own all of the streaming business. What we're seeing now with HBO and the you know HBO Go app and other content deals is people love content still. And they're not just gonna get everything from Netflix. And so it becomes one more choice in a post-cable world. Of, so it's the same kind of problems in the cable world aligned to my screen and my choices, whether it's uh, iTunes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ITV, whether it's Netflix or whether it's a browser. And so Netflix is a great company. Uh, nothing different about it as a great company. And you know, it's just momentum. You know, there's plenty of streaming opportunities right now. Amazon is another. They came out with earnings that, you know, on an absolute basis were pretty good, but they didn't meet expectations. Is Amazon something to be worried about, or is it more like Google that they're smartly investing in the future? Bezos, like the people of Google, says, you know, to hell with expectations. I'm going to invest and do what's smart longer term. And if you don't like it any given quarter, tough. It's going to pay off like all of their other initiatives have so far. I own a lot of Amazon, and I've written it up. I didn't, should have maybe hedged something into the earnings. 205, the stock was priced perfectly. The company is not Netflix, that's for sure. Right. They're diversified. They have many different tap access points to the customer with the Kindle, books, music, uh, every product on their ship. They definitely got to continue to focus on customer service and their shipping is their differentiator. But uh, still a lot of places for Amazon to uh, fall. Amazon is American culture and internet and this stock is not Netflix. Right. So uh, I'm not buying it, I'm not selling it. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is right now and the company's gonna go back into the show me phase right now.